This video is about the comparison between mid-90s and skate kitchen, where each film gives emphasis of what it's like to have fun skating with friends and peers, how skating gives life to these kids in such hard time in their lives. Personally, I never knew how to skate, but what struck me most to these films is how they translate their passion for skating to non-skaters like me. Both films can be enjoyed whether you're a skater or a non-skater. The influence in these films are beyond that it made me want to skate, which could only mean that these films are magnificent. But like any other movies, it has its flaws and downs, and we're looking at through these two films. Jonah Hill, the director of mid-90s, based the movie about his childhood during the 90s. Having spent his youth loving skateboard and admiring hip-hop, it is very prominent watching the film. The aspect ratio and texture of the movie is inspired by the popular home video at that time, The Camcorder. Hill's directing gives such rawness and authenticity to his debut. To address the originality of the film, Hill casted real skaters. The recklessness of these characters corresponds with how the film looks dirty, bold, and there is a great emphasis of texture from the roughness of the streets. Unlike Skate Kitchen's clean and flowing, almost documentary style like movement, Hill's movement is grounded and controlled. It is what a film should look like. Given the fact that Hill is an avid hip hop fan, his choice of music circulates well with how the movie is edited. A beat is joined by a cut. A liberating chorus is joined by a long take. You're really interesting. The way the camera moves describes what these kids are feeling while skateboarding. It justifies how these kids feel that it makes you understand how freeing and liberating skating can be. Skate Kitchen, on the other hand, is a contrast to mid-90s. Although it is about skating and friendship, it shares a different point of view, debunking the stereotypes of skating. It introduces fresh perspective from a girl's experience of skating. You can say that whatever mid-90s was built from is deconstructed in Skate Kitchen. Crystal Mosel's earlier work, Wolfpack, a documentary that gained critical acclaim at Sundance, has a parallel-like theme to Skate Kitchen, which tells a story about a group of kids in New York doing their own thing, Wolfpack being cinephiles and Skate Kitchen being passionate about skating. Although Skate Kitchen is a narrative feature, it feels like a documentary. Authenticity is the authority that moves seamlessly throughout the entire film. We are presented with real people who are passionate about skating, just like mid-90s. It does not aim for an artistic approach, it aims for originality. The art is already within that authenticity. It is almost like a metaphor shared between the camera and the movement of the skaters. Skaters being fluid and flowing, everything within the frame is also fluid and moving. The camera does not have a specific angle to shoot. There are moments when a steady cam veers to the right unintentionally. The entire production feels like a running gun thing when you just go out and shoot stuff and it actually works. Stevie and Camille are kind of the same. They came from a family that feels a nurse sense of belongingness for them. And through skating, they discovered and created connections that turned into bond. I really root for these two main characters. However, I found it not entirely invested with how the side characters are presented, in particular with Skate Kitchen. Up until the last second of the movie, I knew no one. Well, except for Camille, her mom, and Jeanette. Everyone else seems bland. To begin with, each of them has a unique personality, but the problem is they don't have their own intentions or goals that could progress the movie. Unlike mid-90s, the characters are introduced by having a small conversation between Stevie and Ruben. Why is his nickname fourth grade? Because <laughs> he's as smart as a fourth grader. <laughs> In the first half, the arc is presented through conversations of backstories, and in the second half, the arc is presented through intentions. Nevertheless, development can still progress without backstories just like what Booksmart did. All the characters in that film are distinct from the other. They have their own unique personalities, they have their own goals and intentions that could either influence to be beneficial or detrimental to the main characters. Each of them has their own stories to tell, which is why Booksmart is a never dull moment because all the characters are layered. That is my main flaw with Skate Kitchen. Not much to be felt other than to root for Camille. It feels monotonous. Everything is repeating. To me, Skate Kitchen is made to answer mid-90s. Like one particular scene when a girl in TV talked about the issues of guys being disrespectful towards girls. 
Skate Kitchen answered and examined that side of the coin or what a girl would feel after being mistreated from guys. It gives a refreshing point of view for the audience. So I say if you are eager to watch mid-90s, you should supplement that by watching Skate Kitchen and vice versa. Because each film gives different lens towards the definition of skating. The other one might be from the 90s, but the tropes and stereotypes of skating are still the same. So who is the winner of this battle? No one. Go freaking watch them.